Hello and welcome as today's date, well that comes in that of Wednesday the 26th day of March 2019. My name is Derek and welcome to the Money Charts channel. All bets, trades, and of the like, well that's within each his own risk and their own reward. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what has been going, what's been going on in a little a paradiac style way. So with that being said, let's begin. Now it's time to commend there's another trend swing. And with all that Peter Schiff fud, uh, I guess it don't mean a thing. So Bitcoin, what's your story? Did it find a bullish plan? Was it easy to climb from the bottom we made? When you don't look back, I guess the fear starts to fade away. Oh, it used to fall like fire as it was cold outside. Now it's back in the green like it didn't miss a beat yet. I'll tell you what it takes to make this flow and tell you how the fiat's supposed to go. I'll tell you how Bitcoin's still cheap with gains in sight. Dollar holders will lose everything that was good in their life to the boss that's not nice. I told you what it takes to let fiat go. Yeah. End of that little bit of announcement. Bitcoin at $13,760. $44 now. And the wild moves that can happen. I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if 11100 happens in two hours or 16800 We're in these wild, 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 wild moving states. And uh, obviously I started off with a parody most... 10% of the people, 20% of the people probably know what song I'm talking about. And there's going to be about 50-60% that sounds, oh, that sounds weird, nice, or whatever, because they haven't really heard or heard at all of the song that I mentioned that I spent the last hour trying to uh, just put some lines together. Then I got bored. So it was a good way to end it as the last line. I told you what it takes to let Fiat go. Yeah, I mean, that's it. It's over. Uh, have you let Fiat go? I mean, I've, I mean you still got to have it, but... I mean, you can buy things in Bitcoin. They're a lot cheaper today. And they were... And, I mean, everything's going down in price. This is deflation back over again because as the uh, time was going in here, that's that's what I felt when, like, oh my goodness, it's this cheap in cryptocurrencies based on how many I, uh, how much they cost, how many Litecoin, how many Bitcoin it was at the time, and uh, how many I had as well on top of that as well. And we're, same sort of situation occurring again. And well, I don't. I, this again could have wild. Wild, wild movements. I would like to hear if anyone's talking about stuff within the media. And with, I mean, how much is now Bitcoin uh, going to start to uh, trend and all this sort of stuff? This, I mean, these are wild, wild, phenomenal gains. We are, I'm expecting a top at any time. But again, 16,000 in two hours and then top after that. Could, and even 20,000, 24,000 on Friday. Those are realistic events that... Well, again, put a twenty. Let's just even do twenty thousand. That's a differential of sixty-four hundred. At fifty percent, the probability odds of fifty percent within by the end of the week, by like Friday at uh, five p.m. We'll say New York time. The probability for odds odds of that. I'm not going to say what it is, but it's a lot higher than many of the previous days from before, especially during the bear market times, and more importantly during the oh this little here the volatility. Well. It's it's a lot higher, of course, with uh, the current uh, the current movements. When you go straight up like this, it's got to have to correct one way or another through price or through time. There is no uh, stopping that. As far as profit taking is concerned, I I, I managed to uh, I'll have 25 more ounces of silver very soon. Just a small buy, nothing uh, too much, but enough where it's like okay. I know the uh, the big gains for me I feel are going to come in within Litecoin and Theta. And Bitcoin price is significantly higher than this moving forward. As my plan, I want to have fun within the game of trading. Okay, a monster box. Hmm. It's, uh, yeah, I think uh, not only can I maybe do one, but I can easily do a second. Do I do a second monster box, which is at 500 ounces at one time? That's obviously going to be uh, uh, 20 times higher. Oh, and interesting, because there was a few things I wanted to get. There was uh, three three one two yeah three different coins or three different types of silver i wanted to get one was a two ounce coin well two were two two different two ounce coins 
One was a two ounce coin, just a regular oh, picture of a gal, an alligator and a crocodile, one on top of the other. It's pretty cool. Uh, so I, I just had to get that, just because it looks cool. And it's not too expensive, really. And uh, another one, which is a little expensive, but it's for my collection, and that was a two ounce colored Year of the Dog Perth Mint coin. Now that was like over 70 bucks Canadian, like 35 bucks an ounce. But you know what, it's like, yeah, so be it. And then silver grains, apparently, at least in Canada, are taxable. I was bu I was planning on buying uh, double digits, or I was planning on buying, yeah, instead of buying what I, I bought 20 silver bars, one ounce bars. So instead of buying that, I was going to buy silver grains, but there's tax on it. So I just bought one one ounce. Open it up, have some fun with it. They're like marbles. Really, that's, uh, silver marbles is what I'm going to have. Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right. But enough about silver. And I did so at 12.9. 12.9 was the number. Right by the Fibonacci number. That's, let's put those levels up again. Actually, you know what? Let's just calculate it. Because it's... At another area... It, 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 it can't keep doing this. But each time it does, the levels get really big. 3150 was the approximate low, 20,000 was the approximate high. 12,930, there's the resistance of the 76.4. 9872, 6382, these are all numbers uh, that we've seen before. The, the up target, yes, that's valid, 62,677. Because for an up target, I need to see an up move, which is obvious. Down move, obvious. High divided by low to the root of 1.618. Multiply the low, and that gets me the number breaking above 60,000. So as I state all the time, next level. This if, Until this thing settles down, the numbers work out perfectly. If we're not going to be getting resistance where we stand at 13,000-ish area. And 628 is just a pierce above. I mean, even 15.2 even is a pierce above in my book. But that's getting as far as I can to say Pierce higher. And thus, if we don't get our correction, which is a solid price one, and, and let's just even do some Fibonacci regular retracement from where we stand right now. Let's just do uh, 13,700, and what's the low that I want to do? 3,200 or 3,150. 76 fours in at 9684. And yeah, I mean, this is getting to the point where. That's a 23.6 down percent move. If this goes much higher, like 17, 18, 19,000, then I'm going to be carrying about a 15.4 down. But for now, if there's any serious retracements, 10,000 is where it's going. And even piercing a below to, below to like. Uh, this, uh, this, of course, depends on where the high is, because if the high comes in at, say, 14,900, just as an example, that means the uh, 76.4 would come in at 10,200, and it would pierce below to the even 10. I suppose I could calculate the 85.4. I just don't have it available on the spreadsheet or on this calculator. I can do it on a spreadsheet really easy. And Fibonacci is simple. Start off with the binary numbers of 0 and 1. And always add the previous two numbers, and that gets you Fibonacci sequence. So let's copy and paste this down. And the sequence, we can go. There's the early numbers. And these numbers settle into exact numbers with many decimals, especially down here, let alone even like the numbers before then. So there's 1.618. And if we do the opposite end from the lowest to the high, then we get that. If we get if we take 61.8, multiply that by 61.8, there's your 38.2%. If we take 38.2%, and we multiply that by 61.8, we get 23.6, the 76.4 is 1, subtract that number. And if we take this number, multiply 61.8 again, there's where the 14.5 comes in. And I want one subtract, I want to get eight, I want to get that 1 minus that number, so I'm going to go 1, subtract this. The move of 20,000 divided by 3150 represents a six and a third gain. So this number to the exponent of 0.85 multiply the low 
of 3150 gives us a price objective of 15,272. And since I've been using the same exchange for Fibonacci, let's go ahead and put that line in. And I think I remember saying way back in the day, oh, time will come, I'll probably have to put these lines in. Well, here's the time. And uh, 15273 when I round it. As if that one basis point means any difference at all. I can only do so many of these Fibonacci numbers until we get to previous high of 20,000. For if we look at the size differential of each move, that's not the largest of moves and of from here to here. And when you get to these levels, especially in this type of fashion, it's uh, going to be a breeze through. So I can only allocate these levels to extremely short term uh, points. At least it's getting to be towards that within. The, so it's leaving the, the daily. It's like, OK, it's at the stage. I'll give it a little bit of precedence, but it's 20,000 after that. And we're in high volatile, sick ass, haywire, hog wild rather, hog wild style moves. And if Hogwild doesn't stop, Hogwild only intensifies even greater within it. Which means when the eventual pullback happens, it would get larger. I'm expecting now for it to pull back over 35%. Easy. And, and, and you could do it in like an hour or three days or one day. And if it goes up higher, then those numbers go 40%, 50%, 60%. This goes straight up to 60 because that's the next level breaking 20 I'm just going to keep making it larger and larger, and Hog Wild would get it to that. Where if we get to like 20,000 by like Friday, maybe the following Friday at 60,000. And it's rare that we get into these situations of extreme hyper aggressive moves up, but the volatility becomes sick. We're getting the big volume coming in. Uh, one of the things I'm mentioning, and it's best to see other charts where, or like where you can see all of it. If this volume gets bigger than this, we notice it's. Uh, substantially larger on a big up move like this and then you want to give it a lot of crescents that we're probably in top eight territory for the time being and let's just take a look at the other this is the coinbase volume uh, bitfinex is a little lower but not by much 13,600 its volume is pretty high but not new highs by any means and bitstamp is high and again Nothing making new highs overall. I guess I could suppose I could look at, say, the Tether on Binance. It's getting up there, but it's still, it's only, well, it's not much, much, it's close. It's close. And maybe we're just one little shift away in that 15,000 level, or 20,000. Just might be something that gets us there. But when we take a quick look at multiple time frames within the uh, four hour term, we've had trend line breaks, all of this. I mean, that's not even close to a straight line. And that's not even close as well. That's closer. But this point, this point, and this point, we can see ultimately ended up going through a break. And, and I mean, this four hour period is sick in itself. It's up 8% just in this four hour period. Last four hours, one and a half. Before that, one and a quarter. Before that, two and two ninths. Before that, uh, three and four fifths. Before that, th uh, three and three fifths. Before that, a little over two ninths or 0 0.23. So every single one of these periods over and over and over up. Single hour term time frame. What a big, big hour that occurred at noon. Breaking above the 12.9 level, that was big resistance. As you see, you come in here, now you come back to it. Oh, now it's live to take out, and it has. Even intra-hour, big sideways move and progressing higher. Nine minutes left in the period. Okay, big, uh, big, big up move. The, we haven't came back to where, where we came from in here. That's the 12.9. Maybe we still will. Probably we still will, but we'll see. And from where would be the another question because this can go to 20,000 and it could pull back here. That's the, that's the sick part of our volatility now. 
And again, I'm thinking 10,000 would is most certainly going to be an area where it, if we don't go if we don't go anywhere near 20,000 next it's going to 10. I would guess 10 before 20 at this point. But there's also it's math uh, the ten, there's much more easier because difference of 10,000 to 14 is like like 38%. And it's going to take close to a 58% to get to the 20. But as we're playing out now on this uh, 15, this little red candle down, and we've already gotten back to it, holding and staying above. So to me, it looks as if it's poised to continue this breakout. Buyers in control in all these time frames. 15-minute term, buyers are in control. One-minute term, buyers are, have had control since it uh, since 1.14 p.m. That's right now it's 252. That's an hour and three quarters. Buyers have been in control. Well, the sellers had a little bit of move here. But here's the thing they bring it down from like 13.7 to 13.2. Uh, that's a good 3%. And then the quick rally buyers in control of this market, golf sell offs, guilty until proven innocent. And how have they been guilty? And here we go again, back to previous low. And this is that spot. Well, there's a few of them. There's here, when the red candle down here, where it was at the point where it has correction, flirting with this, if it's a reversal, we're going to do this, or at least maybe go sideways for an period of time. But still, going up to the 18 average of highs, nothing uh, bearish about that, or nothing, nothing stopping a bearish move by doing this, coming back down, but in here, it's like, oh, wild card. And then you see all of this. This was saying, oh, this is this was where it's supposed to break down. It's doing the exact opposite, giving you indication buyers regaining control of this market. And boy, have they ever done so from that point on. Again, altcoins still continuing to get their asses kicked. When we look at the percentage moves in here, Bitcoin's up 17%. Bitcoin cash against the dollars up 7%. And Litecoin against the dollars break even. It's like, as good as a dollar today, anyway. Bitcoin dominance, it's ju just that. Binance against the US dollar, also like Litecoin, break even. Silver is down a half a percent. Gold is down a full percent. Gold's more volatile right now at the current time frame. That's why it's down. Quick look at gold. As I was stating yesterday in the single hour term time frame, that it looked like it probably was going to break down. Obviously, it did. It was this candle in here I was looking at. And at the time, it was a red candle down. Price action came back, broke this support, and is continuing to resist this, but at the same time, is also an attempt to revert the trend, holding it staying above here on this short term. But that's uh, uh, just a look at that. Let's take a look at the losers on here. And they're altcoins against BTC. Goes down 21. Theta's down 20, ARC's down 17, everything down 15, 17%, which means everything else is like break even, down a percent, down 3%. So if minus 15 is your break even number. So you got these other coins down like 2%. Theta's actually like a 5% down day against the dollar. And then you got some of these coins that are down like Ripple, like 12%. They're actually up against the dollar. Dash, again, up 11. Bitcoin Cash. Now, this is working out because. Uh, let's just see. I mean, this I'm looking to sell this as this is higher against Litecoin, and it's just getting its ass kicked right now. But 3674, well, for the day, it's down 9.5. And Litecoin, Bitcoin, it was at the even one number when I last seen it. Or ten or 100 number. It's probably at like 95 or something. 97.8. That's even down more. So it looks like the ratio is moving more in my favor to sell Bitcoin Cash to buy more Litecoin. I mean, this looks like this is a major, hyper, huge crash of me me mega proportions. And it, and it is priced in Bitcoin. It's lost round half its value in one move with only one green candle along the way in a decline that has lasted two weeks. Or two green candles, this day and this day. 12 down days and the last two, three. I mean, it's just been, especially from June 20th, every single day, down three, four, down four, two. Down, I mean, look, every day. And now today's session down again, 15%. Oh, it means buybacks are coming in. This is going to be another one for me. The, the confirmations will be close to ending as of the completion of this video as I'm looking to sell BCH for LTC. And, uh, yeah, look at this against the dollar. It's like, oh, it's like totally dead. And, I mean, obviously this isn't breaking down, but how long has 
Bitcoin been in the mid 130s for? Well, it's been there for like this whole time. It's been getting its ass destru destructively dead against Bitcoin. And if we look at other things like gold against Bitcoin, pick your stock of your choice against Bitcoin for the most part. And almost everything against Bitcoin is getting its ass kicked. Don't be surprised, especially because Bitcoin has had this sick volatility. If after the Bitcoin run completes, and it will complete, whether it's now 15,000, 20, 50, 60,000, when it completes and it goes down or sideways, that we see some of these uh, go up for, like really, really large. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe Bitcoin goes down sideways and then gradually goes higher as these ones have some sick moves. Or we'd be looking at April, May into June of 2017 all over again. And do we have that in here? Uh, well, this was when it started in March for Litecoin. But yeah, it started, it started like, yeah, March, yeah, March, April, May into June. Well, this was at $3, and this ended up going to 260 And what, what was Litecoin doing before this happened? And what was Bitcoin doing? Well, okay, well, let's take a look at Litecoin here. So Litecoin before this, for all of 2017 was practically in this sideways consolidation. What was Bitcoin doing up until March 29th? It was completing an uptrend. Well, at least this one here. And it took a while because you could have been saying in here, March, okay, money's going to be going into Bitcoin here on March the 6th. Well, actually, that's when it happened. It was right around the start of March. So here's March 2nd. And that's pretty much... When the crypto market started rallying, because me as a trader, I started trading cryptos right around February 23rd on Poloniex to start. Then moved on to Bittrex and so on after that. And for the first several days, almost a week, markets and altcoins against Bitcoin were in a big, severe bear market. But a lot of it was because Bitcoin was going from like 400 to 1200. And then all of a sudden, Bitcoin had all this consolidation move. So from March 2nd through March 26th, Bitcoin was in a downtrend after major gains. Something like that could happen again where Bitcoin has up and down choppy movements, pulling back to 10, 9, 8,000 kind of deal. Well, altcoins start starting a run. But then after this occurred, Bitcoin managed to go up all the way. Again, altcoins went all the way up until June. So this was a spot from like end of March to into the start of June where everything went up together against the dollar. Now something like that were to extend further from now, maybe, and this would be sick if this happens, then maybe if it's anything similar, again, regardless of where we top, whether it's here or 15 or wherever, it's all, what, it's, it's all hogwire stuff as it is now anyway. But... Because of this, the volatility would be big. So if you have some up and down swings, maybe a uh, little bit, maybe find support here at 88, piercing below this level here. And then it starts to, uh, then altcoins do the same thing, and then everything goes up together. So Bitcoin will start at 10,000 and work its way up to 60. And all the altcoins will work its way up too. And then at 60,000, we may have severe tops, where everything will go start crashing down a bit. And then the work, the way, the work to a lot, or the the move to that six-figure number, a lot of people are talking about 100,000. Some people go quarter million. Some people go in half million. I'm going 300,000 and change. That 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 level there of a major peak high. Whether it's the all-time high or not, I'm just saying major peak high. Well, that's uh, that that's like a next step after that 60. You go from 60, you pull back, you do whatever. Maybe it takes even a year or two to get to regain things again, and, and off she goes. But for now, that's uh, how I'm looking at this. Expect volatility to, uh, to continue to rise, I would think, as we continue to uh, move forward, and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.